Once again, we're here to talk about the money. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my next location. If you're new, my name is Priscilla. I am a new Seattle-based flight attendant working with a major US airline company. On this channel, I share my experience as a flight attendant and becoming a flight attendant, how the journey has been, how it's going, and what's popping right now, okay? <laughs> With that being said, I do have three playlists in my description box below. One on how to become a flight attendant. The second one on my flight attendant training experience. I detailed every single week, so check that out. Lastly, I do have a playlist on all my schedule reactions since I got on the line. So check those out. In today's video, I will be talking about flight attendant pay. Once again, we're here to talk about the money. You know, the money is very important. Like, it is critical to our survival at this point. As I promised, in the month of August, I will be sharing with you all how much I earned in the month of August working the schedule that I worked for the month of August. So the reason I'm talking about the month of August specifically is because I did a good amount of work and I had a good amount of time off. So I just want to show you all how much you can earn working those trips, those amount of days and getting those amount of days off to see how feasible or how good the quality of life can be doing this job as a non-commuter. Remember, I don't commute. If you're new to this channel, I do not commute. I live in base. I was fortunate to have the city or the state that I lived in be open or offered to me at the time when I was going for flight attendant training. So we're happy about that. So before I move on to talking about the pay, let's do a quick recap. For the month of August, your girl did, like I said, reasonable amount of work. So I started off the month of August with reserve days. So I worked a six full day reserve day block. So essentially, as you can see, the hourly value of all these trips, I will add that essentially some of these trips eventually did change in the sense that I gained hours on some of them. Like the three day trip that I did on the 11th to the 13th, for example, it ended up being worth, I think, 21 hours over 21 hours and before I move on I'm just gonna speak to you all about the trips that I got assigned during that reserve period because as of the time when I recorded my schedule reaction video I have no trips assigned for that reserve period so whatever you saw or what you see now was just it being what it was just me being on reserve during those six days straight reserve I got assigned standby I wasn't used on the first day and then between the three second day and the third day of being on reserve i got assigned a lean over and then between the fourth day and the sixth day of reserve i got assigned a three-day trip and that three-day trip was worth 21 hours and 37 minutes it was a domestic trip and then the lean over was worth six hours and 22 minutes so i did get used mostly on the six day reserve that I had. And I have a full video of me working that as well. Followed by the 11th to the 13th of August, I had a three day trip, which was worth 19 hours and 16 minutes. And then I had a turn on the 18th of August, which was worth over 10 hours and a international trip, which was on the 19th to the 21st, which was worth over 20 hours. And then for the 25th to the 27th, I had another three day trip that was worth 20 hours, followed by a one day trip, a turn, which was worth over nine hours. So that's the work that I did and for the month of August the days off the total number of days off that I had was I had about 13 days off excluding the day that I had my new hire meeting on and it was such that every week I had at least three days off. That's how my August was set up. So essentially I worked for four days, I get three days off. For the first week, obviously I was on eight days, then I had three days off. And then I had another three day trip and I had four days off. Then I had a turn in a three day trip and I had three days off, but I had a new hire meeting in between all that. But we're just gonna count it as a day off because it didn't take up my entire day. And then followed by a three day trip and a turn and I had three days off. And then I start the month of September. So like I said, I did a reasonable amount of work and I got a reasonable amount of days off every week it wasn't a typical nine to five week where you're working Monday to Friday and you get two days off that was not it all right so let's talk about the money okay let's talk about the good part for the month of August how much were my trips worth with the image you're going to see on the screen the total monetary value of the, the days that I work are all include the trips that I did and 
my uh, my boarding pay and any other premium pay or delay or reroute pay that I received. So keep that in mind. So this is a true value of the money or monetary value that I made in the month of August. Although it doesn't, it, it's not after taxes. This is before tax deductions and other sort of deductions. So keep that in mind. All right. So let's move into that. So during my eight days between the trips that I got assigned and my airport standby that I got assigned. I earned $1,660.10 for being on reserve for six days and working a three-day trip, a lean over, and an airport standby. Next was the three-day trip that I had between August 11th to the 13th. That three-day trip was worth 19 hours and 16 minutes, and I made a total of $891.64. This includes my board and pay as well. Then on the 18th of August, I worked a turn it was a very high value turn. It was worth 10 hours and 14 minutes and I earned $404.87. Before I move on, this is why some people at least at my base will argue or even at a base like New York, for example, will argue that sometimes it's not about it being a three day trip or a two day trip. It's about the value of that trip. Because if I do three of those, the turn that I just talked about, which is worth 10 hours and 14 minutes, that three day trip would have been if I do three of those trips, it would be worth over 30 hours. However, a typical three day trip is worth 20 hours or some places even less than that, depending on what base you are. But if I base our, our three day trips or international three day trips, for example, are worth over 20 hours and that's a full three day. Whereas if I stay domestic and I do turns, three turns during that period, high value turns, I will potentially earn 30 hours from doing terms and staying domestic rather than going to Amsterdam or London. So remember, sometimes it's not about the layover or the destination, it's about how much you're earning for your time. So keep that in mind. So yes, on the 18th, I did that high value turn, which was a one day trip and it was worth over 10 hours and I earned $404.87. Once again, all of this includes my boarded pay. And then on the 19th, I had a three day trip between the 19th to August 21st and that was worth over 20, it was 20 hours and 20 minutes and it was worth $916.85. And of course I have my new hire meeting, which was on the 23rd of August and my the pay for that was $120 followed by August 25th to the 27th where I did a turn which was also worth 20 hours and one minute and I made $948.11. I did a turn on the 28th of August. I did a turn which was worth nine hours and 39 minutes and I made $371.27 from that. So you would notice that the three day trip that I did on the 19th to the 21st was an Amsterdam trip and it was worth 20 hours and 20 minutes. And the three day trip that I did between the 25th to the 27th was a domestic trip and it was worth 20 hours and one minute minute. However, I made more money on that domestic trip than Amsterdam trip because of what the boarding pay. I worked more flights on that trip compared to my Amsterdam trip. So that's why I earned more money. All right. So that's why I always argue that if you're trying to make money, you don't only make money by flying international. Going international, it's nice for the layover destination among other things. But if for this month you want to make money, you might have to look beyond that as well. So those are the monetary value for the trips that I worked that month. And I did want to add that I did get my summer flying bonus or summer flying incentive or premium pay or whatever they call it. Essentially during the summer, if you work over a certain period of allotted hours, get an additional pay for that additional number of hours that he worked as well. So I worked, I think for the, and this was for July, that summer pay that you see for in August was actually based on the flying that I did in July. And I think in July I worked 110 hours total, my flight time, like that's how much I flew. Like I was in the aircraft, boarding door clothes, takeoff, landing, all that. That's what I did. I did 110 hours for July. So I got that summer premium pay. Pay is triggered when you do over 90 hours. So I did, I worked 20 hours in addition to the minimum, which was 90. So that's what that was. And I got that premium pay or that bonus was what I, that I received was $217.06. So putting it all together between my eight days and my three day trips and the turns that I worked in the month of August, I earned 5000 
$529.90. This includes everything. My new hire meeting, my boarding pay, any delays or reroute pay, holding pay, any additional EDBD, whatever, whatever it was. This was how much I earned. I earned $5,000. $529.90 and the total amount of flight time so the flight time is when I actually flew being on the aircraft and actually working it doesn't include my layover time it doesn't include any holding where I any delays or whatever no what the flight time is is the amount of hours that I actually spent on the aircraft flying and working and the total hours that I did for the month of August was 107 hours and 32 minutes Yes, and for that, I earned $5,529.90. If you've watched my pay, my, my video on flight attendant pay and the full breakdown, I spoke about all the other additional pays that we get aside from our hourly pay. So all those pay components that I mentioned in that video are all included in this total amount. I did not fly flight leader. I didn't fly purser. I was just an ordinary new flight attendant earning her base pay of 30 whatever dollars, which is in my other video. If you don't know what it is, please check that out. Um, I do have a link in the description box below. It's part of the playlist of how to become a flight attendant. But yes, this was what I earned as a new flight attendant working a full month of high time three day trips, high time turns and getting used on my reserve days in that month. So bear in mind that this is base specific. A certain bases, like a base like Salt Lake City, for example, might not have such high turns or even if they do, it might not be available for pickup because senior people are holding that and they're keeping it. And also, if you were based in New York, for example, and you did in Amsterdam, your Amsterdam trip will not be worth the 20 hours that my Amsterdam trip is worth in Seattle. So somebody might essentially probably pick up the same Amsterdam trip that I worked in my base at Seattle and it's worth over 20 hours, but in New York, it might be worth 15 or 16 or 13, whatever it is. So keep that in mind that my pay and the value of my trips are base specific. So um, that doesn't mean that we don't have very low value two day trips or three day trips, but we have a good balance of very high credit and low credit as well. That's a full pay breakdown for the month of August. That's how much I made. I have three days off every week and I earned over $5,000. This once again does not include any deductions or taxes or fees or whatever. It's my money that I made from flying 107 hours and 32 minutes. With that being said, if you guys want to see more um, videos on pay and money with regards to the flight attendant life or the job as a whole, prepare yourself because I do plan on talking more about that because I know there's a lot of content about how much we don't get paid well. So I do want to show you all the realistic monetary value from what we do. Also, I'm not a commuter, so I'm not spending money on other stuff aside from my rent and my upkeep. So keep that in mind as well. So yes, I made almost $6,000 in the month of August. September is looking very lean right now. So I don't know what we're gonna get in September, but it is what it is. All right, y'all, so this is the real tea. This is how much I made in August. And um, that being said, I do plan on creating videos on like how much I spend when I go on a three-day trip or a two-day trip or a turn. If I meal prep, do I spend money? If I don't meal prep, how much I actually spend on food, among other things. So keep an eye out for that. With that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video. I do appreciate you all. If you do have any questions, drop it in the comment section below. I'm checking out. See you in my next one. Bye-bye.